Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 5th of October, 2007, approximately 1 p.m. The interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Holly Frank Waldron, mechanical New York. I was born on February 19th, 1924, mechanical. What was your educational background prior High school. to going in, okay? Um, <clears throat> do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes. I went to the movies that afternoon, and I went home, and my father mentioned, and said, you better get ready. They bombed Pearl Harbor. I said, where's Pearl Harbor? Yes, most people didn't know. Now, here I was going to graduate, and I didn't know where Pearl Harbor was, but anyway. It wasn't long after I found out where it was. How did you feel personally, do you remember? Uh, not really. It was my last year of school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got graduated. And naturally I figured I was going to get drafted anyway. My father being a Marine, I uh, said I'm going to enlist. So I enlisted in the Marine Corps. Okay. I went in December 15, 1942. Now was your father a World War I vet? Yeah. He was honored down in Boston there oh. a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he went overseas during the Yeah. So they must have been like Bella Woods and so Bella Woods and the Argonne. Just three silver stars and the, the French, big French medal. So. Wow. My, okay. my father was well decorated. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, where did you go for your basic training? On uh, Paris Island boot camp. Then I went to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. What was your basic training like? Well, it was all new to me, but I enjoyed it because uh, I, I, I liked the obstacle courses and uh, it was something different. Mm -hmm. Had you ever been away from home no, before? No, I was never away from home. So How did said, you feel about that? Did you hear well, that? I said it's something really got to be done, but we all thought at the time we might be home in a year. You know, they hadn't come up with a song back then. You'll be back in a year, you're in the Army now, you know. <laughs> I would soon found out that. Uh, now, being in in 42, did, did you have, um, use mostly World War One weapons when you first started training? We used, yeah, we used the old, old threes. Old threes? And during boot camp, when we were on the rifle range, they brought in the M1s. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the change? Well, to tell you the truth, it was... It didn't matter much to me mm -hmm. at the time, if you remember. Had you ever fired a gun before? No, you went I said I never went to serve, never hunted. Uh -huh. I mean, yet my father and brothers are all great sportsmen. I fished a lot. Uh -huh. I never, I didn't like hunting. And uh, but uh, they uh, taught us very good. How long and, were you at Paris Island in Lejeune? Uh, Ninety days. In mm -hmm. Lejeune, I was. Uh, we went to June in March, the end of March, and we left there, I think, in October. We went by ship to the, uh, we formed the 4th Marine Division, and we went out to Camp Pendleton. And our regiment, the 25th, was in Las Pugas Canyon, Oceanside. And that was, that was kind of rough duty out there, but... Uh, in what way? Why? And the weather, first of all, is because this... Well, a lot of all hills, all mountains, climbing and which I, I didn't mind it at all. I didn't mind it, but uh, cold, no hot water or nothing. You know what I mean? It was all cold, cold water. But it was it was really good training, good training. And uh, we left there and we left, went combat loaded to the Marshall Islands. Now, what do you mean when you say combat loaded? We uh, didn't stop any place. Uh, we went right from Camp Lejeune to the first Jap territory, I think, mm -hmm. was the Marshals, and we hit the Kwajalein Atoll. What was it like? Were you on the first wave? We were on, uh, there are a lot of islands. Yes. Seeing the different regiments and right. battalions at different islands. Mm -hmm. We hit an island called Ennevar. It was a radio station. Oh, okay. And Roy and Moore were the big island. And uh -huh. Kwajalein was the big island. Yes. And an army outfit. And eventually, after four or five days, our battalion was sent down to Kwajalein. 
and we were there 28 days. Mm -hmm. What was it like in question? Well, it was more or less mopping up. <clears throat> and, uh, when Japs were there, they'd come out of the caves and they were more or less scrounging for food. And, uh, so that was your, was that your first action? That was the first operation. Then we went back to Maui. That was supposed to be our res rest camp back on the Hawaiian Islands. And we trained there. And uh, when I'm in the Rosales and we were going to Saipan, and uh, there was a big uh, explosion, May 13th, I think, 1944, where these LSTs were all docked. We were, there were 12, 12 LSTs, and I was very fortunate to be on one of the four stayed afloat while there was a blow up. And we, to this day, we don't know whether it was sabotage or, or what. They were loading the, the LSCs, but the, the LSCs were loaded with gasoline. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, oh, it was a terrible afternoon. But it was the next day why you think nothing happened. All these new Marines come in, the LSTs come in, and we were off to Saipan. Now that happened in Maui? That happened in, in Maui, Pearl Harbor more or less. Mm -hmm. We were out there on maneuvers with the LSTs. They had the landing track, the, the trackers. Right. And our ramp didn't really come up all the way, so we were one of the last LSTs to pull in there and dock, which we were very lucky. That's so we were on the back end. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got out of, backed out of there after all these explosions. So, And then we went in and Saipan uh, and uh, July, or, uh, June 15, 1944. And uh, we uh, went in in these tractors. And we had to go in 1,800 yards to set up our, well, there was an artillery come in, we had to get out of them. Mm -hmm. So eventually we got up to where we were supposed to go. But there were a lot of Japs in the area. Did you take a lot of fire as you came in? Yeah, a lot of artillery fire, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a few of the guys got hit. And, and uh, we, we managed to get up there, and it was awful hot. And that was where Smith, I don't know, you probably don't remember, but Smith relieved Smith. He was a general in our outfit. Mm -hmm. And he oh, relieved the yes. uh, Army general, yeah. yes. They, they were supposed to come up from alongside of us, you know, mm -hmm. so we, and they stayed back and the Japs got behind us. So we were cut off from a while, but it wasn't long after we were all right. How did you, you as a Marine, did you know anything about this relief? Uh, or no, it probably I didn't, didn't no, affect no, you no, all no, at no. the time, but. You no, know, we were all yelling for water, you know what I mean, when you're hungry, or yep. when you're, I mean, it was hot. When you're scared, you're dry. Mm -hmm. And uh, that night when we set up, uh, there was a few Japs that, you know, see, that were, they were, we killed them. And I remember that next morning I reached over and I grabbed the canteen off and I said, if he could drink it, I could drink it. So, but uh, that afternoon when we, had, we were headed for the airport, taking an airfield, and there's two sugar cane fields on both sides of us. And uh, the Japs were in there. They set up, and we got caught between the crossfire. And uh, I was with a, another Marine. We were going down through, and a shell went off between us. And luck, very lucky, I I woke up five days later, boarded a hospital ship, killed the, my buddy. Where were you hit? It, well, I, I was more or less just out of it. I mm -hmm. don't remember a thing. A concussion? Yeah. Knocked you unconscious. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I came to, mm -hmm. and the doctor told me, he says, everything we've asked you in the past four or five days, you just repeated what we asked you. What's your name? And I said, what's your name? Right. And I was very, very, felt good that I came out of it. Mm -hmm. But the doctor, they wanted, naturally, they wanted to send you home, you know, back to the States. And uh, I, I felt like I, I don't want to go back home like this. I don't know how I am. I asked him, would you send me back to my outfit? 
Uh, they were very hesitant about that. I, I, the next thing I knew, I was on a Dutch freighter and I got back to Maui. Mm -hmm. And uh, my skipper, I met him. They were just coming back from Tinian. They hit Tinian after Saipan. And we lost all our lieutenants. But the skipper was a very good, Don Ellis, he was a very nice guy. And he welcomed me back. Now, did your unit as a whole suffer a lot of casualties? We, we, we did, yeah, we did. And uh, more so the next operation on Iwo Jima. We mm -hmm. I did, did, let me go back a second. Did you receive a, a Purple Heart purple for that? Purple Heart, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> And then, as I say, we trained there till uh, that was in the end of July or August. August, how bad. And I just wanted to see how I would react under fire and if I was all right. Mm -hmm. But I know that they were watching me. The word must have got back. Uh, but uh, I seemed to do my thing. Then we trained for Ewo and. Uh, that was a nightmare. Do you think, in retrospect, you were re prepared for what you met at Ewo? We didn't expect what we expected. In other words, we didn't know they were underground. There were mm -hmm. tunnels on Ewo. Right. They, they had a hospital underground. Mm -hmm. And you, you, it's, at night, you're, you're very scared at night. You have two or three men in your fossil. Okay. You have to keep two men awake all times. That was tough after four or five was trying to stay awake all the while, you know. Now, did you go in on the first wave? I went in on the third wave. Third. And, and the Japs waited until we got a bunch of them in there, mm -hmm. then they opened up. And I managed to get up to a shell hole. And what I feared most was the landmines. The island was covered with landmines. The horn type one just kicked. And, and then at the bottom of these shell holes, they would put a pancake mine there. Mm -hmm. And if you missed the horn trap and diving in the hole, you hit that. When I, the hole I hit in, there was a dead marine in there. Mm -hmm. So I missed that. And uh, I did manage to see the captain, Don Ellis, and he asked me, he said, Walter, where's the first platoon? I said, Skipper, I have no idea. I said, I got one guy with me that's in the squad. Well, he says, try to round them all up so we can stay together. And I went out there, but oh my God. And I come back, I reported to him. He said, what did you hear? I said, I heard a lot of Japs talking. <laughs> That's all you heard. Was mm -hmm. the, and our tanks going to get off the beach. They got bogged down, and that was a target for the enemy. And, mm -hmm. and it took us uh, two or three days to really get off of that beach. I know the second or third morning I woke up. And said to the guy in the hall, I said, I see one of our men over on the right. I said, I want to check and see who's in the hall next to us. There's four Japs there. Well, I, I always managed to pick up a BAR. Uh, that had a lot of firepower. I, you know, so I had a BAR. And I did what I had to do. And uh, I went back to the hall. I was shaking like a leaf. And he told me, asked me, he said, what's wrong? I told him. And I threw a grenade in the hole, which I said, what did you do that for? Well, I wanted to make sure, you know what I mean? It, it was just one of those things that you, you were a nervous wreck. Or, you know, and you calmed down after a while. But, uh, you must have been there for your birthday. Of course, I, I had an evening on my birthday. Yeah. And I was 21 years old. And that was another scary thing. I mean, it was a great reception and all that, all the bombs. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, All that no, fireworks I, for your birthday. Pardon? All that fireworks yeah, for your birthday. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, so I, but I, uh, you, you don't be together that long, you, you lose an awful lot of good guys. Good guys. Good guys. Now, what was your objective for your unit? The, the airport? We, uh, we, yes, we had to take an airfield. Sarabachi, the mountain, by the 5th mm -hmm. Marine Division. They went left and we went right. Mm -hmm. it was your Were you aware of the flag raising at all? I'd seen the flag raising. Mm -hmm. I was on a little knoll, a guy from Michigan and I, he was my uh, flamethrower man. They're a great weapon. 
<laughs> the friends are, but they're, they they look for you, you know what I mean? Well, I happen to have them with me, and I said to the Swede, I said, look, and we see that first flag go up, and well, we felt pretty good, and then we see the other one go up. Mm -hmm. Unbeknown, you know, we have history and all yeah. that, and like, but it, it felt kind of good, you said, mm -hmm. oh boy. And then we went on, and how long were you I, I wasn't there where there's a, a hill called Turkey Knob Hill, mm -hmm. and it was a Sunday. And we had to move out that day, and naturally every day you, you moved out as far as you could, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you had the, we had the 24th Marines on our flank, and you always wanted to make sure who was on your flank. You wanted to make sure it was one of your, your own men, you know, your own outfit. And that Sunday afternoon when we dug in, when we got up where we were supposed to get, we didn't, I didn't realize, I thought we were going to take the hill, you know what I mean, and we didn't, we stayed there. So that afternoon about 10 or 3 or 3 o'clock, I don't know, and I yelled over to him, who's on your flank? He says, I don't see anybody and I don't hear anybody. And I kept my buddy with me, to drop me, he's a good boy, good boy. And I said, right, I'm going over there to see what the situation is, and I went over and uh, there was nobody on the flanks. So there were six of us up there, and I said, my God, I said, we're up here all alone. But before I got to the hole, uh, they shot me, I got two slugs that went through me. But I, I, I was conscious enough to tell the guys, I, I told get out of here, get back. Mm -hmm. I said, because they're right out here in front of us. And I said, the only way I'm going to get out of here, and they lay down smoke. You know what I mean, so they can't see. So I said, get back there and lay down some smoke. And my buddy stayed with me. And he said, you got to crawl. Now where were you hit? Where were you hit? I remember, in the left side of my back. Mm -hmm. And they come out the right, my right side. They give me one bullet. One, they broke a bone in my back, and they give me the bullet I got at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, he said, you got to get out of there. But in the meantime, the smoke come in. And two of my other guys, you know, you're with some good friends of mine, they threw a poncho all down, and between the three of them they rolled me in it and they brought me back. And uh, I, kind of, I didn't like what the lieutenant did, and I more or less told him so, and, but uh, we did manage to get the guys back. But then they loaned me on the jeep. How long were you on EWO? When eight, you eight days. <clears throat> yeah. and, and then you were evacuated to a evacuated. hospital ship? Hospital ship, the Samaritan, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And went back to Pearl Harbor. And uh, How long were you there in the hospital? Oh, three months, I think. Mm -hmm. I was hospital ship there, and then when we went home. I remember one day coming back to the hospital room, I don't know where I was, x-rays or something or whatever. There were three purple hearts on my pillow. I said, my God, I said, you know, right now, I had some too bad. And they send you a gold star. Mm -hmm. Well, you're wounded more than once, you get a star. But anyway, that was beside the point. But, uh, you know, while I was there, I'll always remember Boris Karloff, the movie actor there, he interviewed me. Really? He called my mother up. He got my mother up, or, and uh, they didn't, you know, naturally my mother and father, they didn't believe it in a way, you know, mm -hmm. of course Carl calling them up. But to make a long story short, they, I went back to the Oakland Hospital, California, then I went to Bainbridge, Maryland Hospital there, and sent me home 90 days, and August 15th the war ended, and they sent me to me and 50 other guys to Norfolk, Virginia to get discharged. So, How would you rate your care in the hospital? Oh, that was terrific. That was terrific. Yeah, you, well, penicillin came out then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it saved thousands of lives. I know, I think it saved mine. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, and I got hit through the fourth night on the wall, but it was just shrapnel, you know. One of the fragmentation artillery shells 
put a shrapnel in my leg, but I called a corpsman over and he more or less took the shrapnel and he put the sulfur powder mm -hmm. on it. And he, he wanted to send me, get me off the island. I said, no, because they were raising hell down on the beach, bombing that. So Did you see, receive any other decorations besides the Purple no, Hearts? No, I don't know. I, no, no. It's not got stuff they send you, to, but I, it's all in the drawer. I just, and we got two presidential citations, and we got a naval citation. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and in 14 months, we seen a lot of action. action. And it was the cost of a lot of good men. A lot of good men. Do you remember, uh, you were probably in the hospital when President Roosevelt died. Yes. Do you remember yeah. a reaction yeah. or how well, you were? Well, yeah, you naturally felt bad. I felt bad. Mm -hmm. President Roosevelt, well, we, one time during, I was in Pearl Harbor. It must have been between the Saipan operation and Iwo. And uh, I can see him yet in a convertible car with that hat on uh, mm -hmm. and the cigarette hanging out of a cigarette holder. And he was trying to talk, and the airplanes were flying over, you know, to uh, what he said. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember standing there. Do you remember where you were when you heard about the dropping of the atomic bombs? Yes, I do, and uh, I was so grateful. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but we'd have lost a million men if we were headed to Japan. That's how well fortified it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was glad. I was glad it was over with. Do you ever have any? Uh, aches or pains from the wounds? I've had a lot of back problems, but mm -hmm. you know, let's keep, you know, you don't say, as long as you can work and walk and perhaps. And as far as uh, war, I dreamed an awful lot. I'm sorry, but you lay there at night and you think, why can't I dream of a pretty girl or something like mm -hmm. that? And I, I guess, see myself setting up the platoon for the night or the squad, you know. And mm -hmm. It was just one scary thing, that's all it was, and uh, it was bad. And, uh, After uh, you were discharged, did you use the GI Bill at all? Mm, yes, I cut me. Yeah, I, but, uh, I used that. Uh, did you use the 5220 Club? No. That, you know, and I felt. This is this is funny. I, I a bunch of guys, you know, you hang around. And, mm -hmm. They said, "Holly, what are you doing working?" I said, "Join the 5220 Club." I said, so, and, and, and "Get money every week." I said, "Right, I ain't got enough money to join any club, you know." I thought you had to pay to join the 5220. Then when I found out what I was all about, I said, "Well, I, the guy I worked for was an awful nice man. Mm -hmm. I worked for him before the war mm -hmm. when he had a little market." So I stayed with him. But, uh, no. Did you join veterans organizations? Oh, yeah, I'm in the DAV, life member, the BFW, DAV, American Legion. You active in those? Uh, the Marine Corps League mm -hmm. and the Legion, yeah. Marine Corps League, though, like I say, they're all shot down now. I mean, yeah. Uh, Do you ever uh, stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? Yes, I have. Every winter we try to get to Florida for a few months and back in, I'm going back 19 years ago, my skipper moved from Jersey to Avon Park, Florida. And I called him up. I said, Skipper, I said, hey, coming up February 19th, I said, let's have a little reunion. He says, I'll round up a few troops, you get who you get. Well, you know, it was surprising through the years. They were coming from California. They were coming from all over. Mm -hmm. I say, what, 20 guys maybe or 30, mm -hmm. but with their wives. And, mm -hmm. and it made a very, but every year you lose, and yeah. then we lost him. And right now, I'm the only, I just lost a very good friend in Amsterdam. He was a very good friend, good man, very good man. 
Yeah, so this is they say. In fact, he even came down to a couple of them in Florida, him and his wife. But now, in the 4th Marine Division, they have a reunion every year in some big city. Mm -hmm. And we have a scholarship foundation, which we put thousands of kids from college. And uh, I had, in fact, I had a grandchild, boy, and I got another one. And they do very good with them. Yeah. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? It was an education, very good education. I told a lot of people that. I said, I didn't go to college. I spent three years in the Marine Corps. And I said, that, I think that was equal to four years of college. And uh, now, I, uh, as I say, I love the Marine Corps. I didn't like the combat part of it, but I loved the Marine Corps mm -hmm. as a whole. Well, thank you very much. Any for questions? Here. No, I think no. we covered everything. Very good. Oh, that's the way it was. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right.